Welcome back to eSim Studios. My name is Taylor Bell. I hope everybody had an enjoyable weekend. It is a Monday, but uh, I used to hate Mondays, but not so much anymore. Um, got some interesting tech news here for our 10th episode of the Daily Tech News. Now, we've been mentioning uh, the, was it the last one or two tech news episodes about a new i have some pixel news too i got nothing uh nothing uh phone 2a news and i have pixel news big news that uh you're not going to want to miss i can promise you you're going to be sorry if you did I, I, I can guarantee you that um look the we've covered the the rumored uh nothing phone 2a it's a similar uh, design and, uh, excuse me, not design. It's a similar idea, sort of how the A series is for Pixel, right? It's going to be similar in that it's going to look fairly close to the flagship design language, but it's just going to be a watered down, cheaper version. Uh, how the 7A is to the 7 or the upcoming 8A will be to the 8 series. And nothing is using that method uh, for their cheaper uh, device, right? So we've we got a report last week that it's going to have similar design language to the flagship Nothing Phone Two, right? However, there was a little there was a little twist to it. Instead of the cameras being up and down like kind of looks like an iphone 11 right instead of the cameras looking like this circular off to the side it's actually going to be across the back horizontally like the pixel 8 pro except they're going to be individual not one big oval not one big pill shape <laughs> now we actually got to see one for the very first time. Now, a leak came out. Let me pull this up. And uh, some specs, too. Some more specs. I know we kind of briefly reviewed the, or I guess guessed <laughs> what they were going to be. Because remember, if a company is putting out a cheaper version, they have to cut costs somewhere, right? Because if they're not asking as much money as their more expensive flagship device, they have to get profits from somewhere else, right? So they're going to use cheaper parts or less expensive, less performing uh, parts to, to put in the device. Uh, we got a rumor on the price and uh, some specs. Let's get into it here. Now, this may, well, let's take a look. I'll say this may look a little weird to some people, but this is actually very common. Check this out right over my face so this is the 2a yes it does look weird uh weird shaped uh, it doesn't even look like a phone but this is common right look let's get the elephant out of the room first then we'll go over everything else what the hell is up with this design well this is common practice for phone manufacturers um i used to be into cars right automobiles i used to love you know all sorts of stuff about automobiles not so much anymore but this is common when the new corvette came out in 2020 when they were testing the corvettes on public streets or even on a racetrack they would put some weird design on it they would add they would put it in camo they would make it look like a zebra they would add a different bumper on it or uh, cover the headlights or the grill because they don't want to basically leak their next model. They want uh, there to be some sort of surprise, right? If they showed us ex everything right now, what it looks like and all the specs, interest would go away until the launch, right? Well, they want to keep you interested in the device. So that's why this has a special case on it. So it semi hides the design of the phone. It's similar to what car manufacturers do when they test their new automobiles that they have yet to be released. So it's got a big clunky case. It's going to look nothing like this, right? It's going to look, I guarantee you, it's going to look just like this. Same 
uh, it's actually the same screen size is exactly the same, but it's going to look maybe not 100% like this. Obviously the cameras and we'll get to that in a second, but I'm uh, the back, the, the glyph, uh, the LEDs in the back are going to be the same. Should have a clear back as well. Uh, should be rounded on the mid frame, meaning around the border of the phone should be flat in the flat front and back. So it'll look nearly identical to this, maybe 95% identical to this minus the camera setup, right? But they still want to leave some intrigue for the potential consumer. So that's why they put this clunky ass case on here. So you can't really get a good look at it, right? Now, the horizontal camera, I think they chose to go with the horizontal design similar to, and thank you for a subscriber and viewer on my previous video. I was like, it's just like the S10. The S10 is the last phone I can think of with this horizontal design. I stood correct. Uh, I, somebody corrected me. Um, actually, the Nexus 6P had the horizontal. Now, it was like all the way at the top on the back, but it was across the back. So I, I did thank them. I said, man, thank you. I totally forgot about that phone. I had the 5X. I did not get the 6P. Um, so those two phones stand out, right? S10 and Samsung Galaxy S10 and the Google Nexus 6 P. I think they went with the horizontal design just to be give it a little bit different look because if you made a carbon copy of this phone with just a little bit less specs, like putting putting something out like that on the market, honestly, um, well, even this, right? This is risky. Uh, what they're doing with this two A, it is, and that's why the price point matters so much how where are they going to price this where are they going to price it right how much are they going to ask for it because ultimately that will there the percentage of people that don't 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 care about the price they just got to have it is very 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 minuscule right it's probably one and two three percent the overall price the price point where you price it at now you can always discount it if you're the manufacturer in the future but the initial price point, that's what sticks uh, across the globe, across the internet. It's crucial uh, when you are having a, a an interested potential consumer, customer of your product. And I think if they had a carbon copy of this, I'm not sure how many they would sell. I think just, just that one little extra look and look th this honestly might have been a prototype of what they were going to make the phone one look like or the phone two and they just kind of nah i like uh we like this carl pay we, we like this design better where they're off to the side uh um vertically and they're like oh well we like the horizontal but it just didn't uh, uh, cut it, right? Like it got down to the, who knows, the final four prototypes and they just chose what they have now. Because this phone, the phone two is a nearly identical to the phone one, it's just bigger, right? With better specs inside. So I think they're choosing a, in fact, I don't know for sure, but I can almost, I'm gonna say guarantee, but um, there's a high percentage that this is the case where this was a prototype of what the phone two was going to look like. Uh, they just chose to go with the current phone two look, right? So something a little different, uh, something for people to, uh, take a look at, right? They want you to look at it and then you see the specs, you see the price. And then within those few seconds, you decide if you're interested or not. If they made a carbon copy of the phone one and phone two, just with cheaper specs, people would be like, yeah, I've already seen that. You know what I'm saying? So they need something to put your eyes on. So I think that's why they went with the vertical design. Now let's look at the specs. So we got, let's see, a 120 hertz OLED panel. It is not, I repeat, it is not an LTPO, meaning where it goes from zero to 120 hertz, depending on how you're using the device. It, it would go down to zero uh, to help save your battery. And it does. It's I've used LTPO panels. I've used non-LTPO panels. And I've used LTPO2 panels. And it makes a huge difference. 
in battery life. Now, those are more expensive because it's newer technology. Remember, they're trying to cut costs. So that's why they're just sticking with the OG traditional 100, uh, 120 hertz panel, which is no problem. It's, it's going to be a beautiful looking display. I can promise you that. Now, it's going to have the Dimensity 7200. This is very interesting because I was... I didn't know which way which way they were going to go. Now, none of these specs are, are 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 none of these specs are set in stone, right? It could change, but when they when you get a phone company manufacturer that builds the phone, you get to a prototype, and look, they're they're looking to launch this. Look at the very bottom at Mobile World Congress, which is a the second biggest. Uh, consumer electronic show in the world right behind CES. Now, Mobile World Congress, yeah, I think is in Barcelona, Spain. And uh, CES is in Las Vegas at the very beginning of every year. Mobile World Congress, I uh, believe is in late February. At least traditionally, it's always been in late February. Now, maybe they changed it, but I doubt it. So you were looking at what basically two months away eight weeks away i can guarantee you they've already started production like you can't be this late in the game or close to a launch date and you're still not knowing like which design to go with like if this is the one that's shown i can promise you it'll look somewhat this is the one they're going with so i didn't know what cpu they were going to put in there again cost 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 when you have these um when you have these uh watered down versions these uh mid-range versions like the 7a or this 2a every freaking part every piece of material the team goes over and they take mm -hmm. their like for google for the a series they take their pixel 8 or their 8 pro like all right so how can we make this phone 200 dollars cheaper to build to manufacture so they'll go over the power button. Can we source those any cheaper? The volume buttons on the side. Can we source those any cheaper? What about the glass that's on the back of the sensors? Can we get that at a cheaper price or downgrade to the last year's version of the glass and get it for 20% cheaper? Uh, the black, the back panel. All the flagships are going to have the latest and greatest specs. When at least when it comes to uh, the Google flagship, Samsung flagship. Um, but when they make a budget phone, you go well, even this everything, the speaker, the vibrator motor, everything, they throw everything on the board and they have certain teams or groups of people that that's their job to find out how I can get a cheaper speaker that's uh, uh that that they can source so i didn't know where they were going to go with the cpu i just thought just a random thought that they were going to go with the new snapdragon 7 gen 3 or possibly 7 gen 2 stick with the qualcomm snapdragon which if you don't know a lot of them they were on the 800 series with their flagship processor in the past now they moved on to the 8 and then it's either Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. Well, their 700 series used to be their mid-range processor. You know, it performed well, just didn't have the high-performance boost that their flagship processor did. Now, they changed that 700 series naming to Snapdragon uh, uh, 7. I guess we would be on 7 Gen 3 this year. So I thought they were probably going to put a Snapdragon 7 Gen 3, probably 7 Gen 2. Um, in there just to save money cheaper but i was surprised this says dimensity uh 7200 and we'll look up the specs of that here in a minute it performs similar to the snapdragon 7 gen 2 so it's something similar to that now will it perform all your normal tasks and everything you needed to yes will it be able to run your latest and greatest mobile game at full resolution Probably not, but it will should be able to handle 90-95% of the games. It just won't perform at the very top peak. And that's what you get paying more for your flagship devices. But this should be fine. Um, it's going to come with 8 gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of storage. It is what it is. Um, I'm over 128 gigs of base storage. 
I'm not even going to consider a phone that's 128 gigs. But um, the 7A, that's all it comes in. The phone 2A, that's all it looks like that's all it's going to come in. I don't think there's going to be a bigger storage variant because with these budget phones, they keep it to a minimum. Because why are you going to get a budget phone with more storage? When you buy a budget phone, the number one factor is price. So people aren't saying, oh, I want the budget phone, but I'm going to pay more for more storage. No, then just go get the Pixel, um, you know, 7 with 256 gigs instead of the 7A. So it's just how these companies work and how the average consumer uh, mind works with these mobile devices. It will have, now I don't know what sensors, a pair of 50 megapixel dual camera setup just like this. These are both 50 megapixel. I don't know what Sony sensor it's going to have. I'm assuming it's going to have a Sony sensor, but once we get closer to launch, uh, I'll keep an eye on this and make sure I update you all as far as to what sensors it's going to have. Might be the same, might not. Um, it'll ship with nothing OS 2.5, which is what we updated this. Actually, it's on the beta uh, 2.5.1. Uh, we go through all the features and all the good stuff of this device. So if you're interested in seeing what nothing OS 2.5 offers, please go look at our video about a week ago. I think we did that. It'll have Android 14. Now, it says new back design, but I think that's in regards to the uh, camera setup where it's horizontal. Now, one thing that crossed my mind, it says new back design. So what if the back of the 2A is not clear like the back of this phone? But they said it still has, it says redesigned glyph. So what if it has a colored back glass? but they have individual cutouts where the glyphs are. So basically, if you look at, now look, it says glyph control similar to phone two, but that's fine. You can use them as notifications. I would expect that to be the same. And um, let's see, hang on one second. Uh, I was thinking this, right? Look, check this out. So what if the phone two, I was thinking, well, surely it'd have a clear back with the glyphs, right? This one's saying redesigned back, but it will have the glyphs, the LEDs. So what if the phone 2A, instead of having this clear back where you can see the internal components in here, what if, but it still has the, the, the LEDs. So what if you would take this like on the 2A and then make it not see-through, meaning you can't see through to the components inside like, uh, like, every other phone is so what if it's like this but has glyphs in it like built into the glass right i don't know i'm just throwing something out there they may do that but i would expect them to do the clear back like the phone too but maybe they want to make it a little different to entice some people don't like the way this looks right i think it's badass like it's one of the best looking phones i've seen but Everybody's different. So what if they want to make it similar to this, but with a little twist, right? So they do the cameras horizontal and then do a uh, flat colored glass panel, but with glyphs in the, uh, uh, where it still has the glyphs, right? Um, so who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Um, now, price, price, price. $400. Would you pay four hundred dollars for these specs and a device that looks similar to this? Um, would you pay four fifty? Because here, I think the Pixel Seven A is four fifty. For hang on, let me pause this. Let me let, let me Google. Okay, so I just checked the. I, I should have known this. I. The A series used to be for 49, 450. Now they bumped up the specs in the A series and now they bumped up the price. So it starts out at 499, basically 500 bucks for the A series Pixel. This one's coming in at 400. You know what I was thinking? What if they, uh, Carl Pay was with OnePlus when OnePlus got into T-Mobile as far as when T-Mobile signs a contract with a phone manufacturer to sell their devices in the stores. Carl Pay was, again, 
uh, with uh, uh, OnePlus when that deal happened, when they brokered that deal. And I know they're trying to get into carriers. Now, they wanted to launch this to see how it would do in America, and it's been a a success, right? Uh, whether how you want to look at the numbers, if they're not public, I do want to see if I could find how many they did sell in, in the U.S., but I'm sure he would like to get into T-Mobile. What if this one was offered at T-Mobile, right? So if you put on a payment plan, it'd be like 18 bucks a month. But 400 is about right because I would expect a little bit. I was I was thinking it was going to be 450 to 499 and have a little better specs. But um, I guess that would infringe on this device, right? Because they're like, well, why would I spend 500 bucks when I can get this for? It's on sale right now for 599 for 600 bucks. So it probably gets too close to uh, to the price point for other flagship device. So they needed some separation, right? So I'll keep you updated on the phone 2A uh, as we get closer to Mobile World Congress at the end of February. We'll get some more details and I'll see if I can figure out what sensors are in the uh, what Sony sensors are in the cameras um, and keep y'all updated. All right, getting back to we have. I kind of stopped covering it because uh, it was just too much back and forth and just, it's a mess, right? iMessage, Apple, Beeper, Beeper Mini, Beeper Cloud, back and forth, blah, 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 green bubble, blue bubble. Um, I got a green bubble. I got a blue bubble. I like my green bubbles. I don't care. I don't care about blue, blue bubbles. It's it's too much. So I was like, you know what? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna stay on top of this. Every every uh, breaking news, it's just back and forth. Apple cuts Beeper service. Beeper finds a way around it. Apple cuts the service. Beeper finds a way around it. Well, apparently, the fight between Apple and Beeper uh, just kind of interesting. Interesting enough for me to start covering it again or at least the, this aspect of it the united states government looks like they're now getting involved there are some senators now i wonder if they tried it i don't know do they get a government cell phone i'm not sure i might have to look into it but look this affects everybody right um just over half, I believe half the country has iOS. And that means basically the other half has Android. So basically, what you know, somebody, I think I'm a rare case where I don't know anybody that has an i. Well, I take that back. I know two people. Um, but that's not a lot, right? Uh, most people, this affects most people. So I came across this today. There are some senators that are going to start looking into Apple for, um, what is it? Uh, hang on, I think I have a screen share for you. Okay, so check this out. I got the, I got this pulled up here on the screen. It shows two senators and two representatives described Apple's actions as potentially anti-competitive conduct. Now they are, the government is suing Google for, uh, I don't know if it's antitrust or basically conglomerate, uh, got too big, right? Squashing the competition, there's no competition. Well, now there's some lawmakers and I'm assuming they're Android users. Uh, I don't know for sure, it doesn't say obviously, but Apple people have no problem with it, right? They keep on using their stuff, so, um, but, Nonetheless, it says four U.S. lawmakers penned a letter to the Department of Justice, yes, the DOJ, over Apple's quick handling of Beeper Mini. Beeper Mini managed to reverse engineer iMessage, bringing the service to Android, but it was soon unavailable thanks to Apple's efforts. These government leaders think the moves were anti-competitive and are asking the DOJ to review whether Apple broke antitrust laws. I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm not going to go over everything. I will, if there's any uh, news stories on this, I'll bring it to your attention. That's newsworthy. But one quick point here before I move on to my last topic, which is a Google Pixel topic you're not going to want to miss. But 
I just activated my okay G O O G L E messaging from iPhone to iPhone or iOS device to iOS device via iMessage is encrypted messaging between an iPhone or iOS device and an Android device either way is unencrypted whether you message from an Android to an iPhone or iPhone to an Android unencrypted what beeper was doing was actually encrypting those messages between iPhone and Android and that's the whole point I can't remember who it was it was a fit was it AOC I think she tweeted out last week when Apple and Beeper were going back and forth, cutting service, starting service, cutting service, starting service. She tweeted, why would Apple do this? Beeper is actually making it safer or um, Beeper is actually adding security. Um, why would Apple want to stop that? She was saying that to the point that I just made, that Beeper was actually encrypting the messages from Android to iPhone, iPhone to Android. So why would Apple want to stop that right and go back to unencrypted <laughs> apple to iphone excuse me apple to android android to apple but i know my head's spinning i'm all, i'm kind of tired of this but um it is a, it is part of the tech world now real quick hang on check this out i have the official document maybe hard to read but official document from the four u.s lawmakers to the it's an open letter to the department of justice asking for them to look into this uh kind of boring legal crap uh, po uh political crap but um it is what it is it is the news and that's what i do part of what i do okay the pixel news everybody has been waiting for so christmas is what uh, about a week away, right? Just right around the corner. Wouldn't it be cool if you could buy a loved one, your girlfriend, your parent, your daughter, a new Pixel for Christmas? That would be awesome, right? But they're expensive. You know, brand new. These, this one, you know, was well. It's upgraded. It was like eleven hundred dollars. I think they upped the price, so now they start at a thousand bucks, at least for the pro. Um, I have a link that you are, and I tested it out uh, with my we're we're hashtag Team Pixel. We are part of Pixel Super Fans, meaning we get little extra perks here and there. Or they ask for our opinions on upcoming devices and what would we rather see. We got a ginormous discount for you. Now these are brand new phones. It's from the Google's uh, website. Let me show you. I got I got a little. Uh, I got a well, not a little. I got a big coupon for you. Watch this. Let me go to share screen. Okay. With the link in the description box, you can get 40%. That's right, four zero. 40, almost half off. A Pixel 8 Pro, a Pixel tablet, or the Pixel 8. Now, I did the math, and for those of you that want to know what it brings, the now this is the base model. I'm not talking about extra storage or because uh, uh, I, I think they add on like 50 bucks for an extra 120 or whatever for the base storage, and that's what most people get. So the Pixel 8 Pro with this 40% coupon you can get in our, uh, 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 in our description box below brings the Pixel 8 Pro to only $600. That's incredible. It's a $1,000 phone. $600. And the brings the Pixel tablet down to $300, which is pretty cheap. And... It brings the Pixel 8 
down to $330. So you can get a Pixelate Pro for 600 bucks. You can get a Pixel tablet for 300 bucks and you can get a Pixel 8 for $330. Incredible deal. Now, I want you to look at something. It's only good 12.31, so the very last day of the year, you got some extra. Let's say you maybe you can't afford it right now, but you're expecting to get some Christmas money from your family, whoever, loved ones. And then, uh, so you can't order it before Christmas, but you can order it after Christmas, right? On the 26th, the 27th, it'll still be valid. Now, it says while supplies last. I checked, today's 12.18. I checked today, everything's still available. Now, this is this this code uh, was given out to certain members of hashtag Team Pixel. These are some of the perks that Pixel super fans get. Um, I checked using this code. So I, what I did is I was like, well, if I let everybody know, I don't want y'all the viewer that's not a hash that's not a Pixel super fan. I don't want y'all to click the link and then it's not valid for y'all. So what I did on a totally separate device, I'm not signing it, or, or a separate account. My Pixel Super Fan is under a, a certain account, but I have a you know a few email accounts, Gmail accounts that's not associated with anything. So I proceeded to click on the link with my uh, with my code that I have here with my link that's built in. The 40% discount code is built into the link that's down below in the description box and it works. So I tested it out on a totally separate account that has nothing to do with my Pixel Superfan membership and it works. So if you want to get this, look, you can buy this, you can get a Pixel A Pro or you can get a, whatever you want and you could even flip it. This is so cheap. Um, like purchase it for, for a very low price, turn around, sell it and make a profit so uh, phenomenal deal 40 percent off your favorite pixel devices and uh enjoy now speaking of christmas and christmas gifts we are giving away a no, nothing watch a cmf c nothing uh as the parent brand of cmf cmf is a sub brand of nothing they make a fitness tracker a sport watch um, that I reviewed on the channel. It's a $100 value, and it can be yours for free. All you got to do is enter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But um, go to esimstudios.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and uh, enter to win because it ends, our contest ends on the 24th of December, so Christmas Eve. So the following morning, Christmas morning, first thing I'm going to do when I wake up, drink some coffee, jump on my email, I mean, uh, uh, computer. And I'll draw the winner and I'll send you a congratulatory email saying Merry Christmas from ESIM Studios. So if you want, and I'll ship it to you for free if you're within the, uh, the inside the United States. So esimstudios.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will see the entry form right there. And that'll do it for the day. So I do want to thank you for joining us. My name is Taylor Bell. This is eSim Studios YouTube channel. And I will see you manana.